hello in this video we will discuss about the FGF 21 so fibroblast growth factor 21 and what is the role of FGF 21 basically it's uh, due to the fasting time it will be produced and uh, due to the response of low sugar level in our body so the protein it is that in mammals is encoded by FGF 21 gene an endocrine subfamily which includes FGF23, FGF15 and 16. So the FGF21 is hepatokine. What that means? That means it releases from the liver. So that is why hepatokine, hepatocytes to hepatokine. And it is an endocrine and regulates simple sugar intake and regulates the simple sugar intake. It means the regulation when we will eat the simple sugar and preferences for sweet foods we are signaling through FGF21 receptors in the paraventricular nucleus of the hypothalamus and correlates with reduced dopamine neurotransmission within the nucleus accumbens. So let's begin to understand with the detail here. So this is the uh, I am drawing the liver and basically remember the FGF21 will release during the fasting for the sensitivity of the some things we will discuss whole in this diagram so this is basically is the liver contain a receptor this receptor can be FGF receptor 1 uh, sorry 4 2 and 3 and it produces the FGF21 bind with the autocrinally with the hepatocyte or paracrinally to other tissue so autocrinally when bind it means when binding the autocrinally will change the physiology change the biochemistry of the liver and when the blood glucose level will be dropped during fasting time it will change the physiology in the liver for example the glycogenolysis so here you can see this is the brain which that's contain prefrontal cortex, cerebral cortex and paraventricular nucleus is here which contain receptor and this receptor can be KLP receptor, FGF receptor 1 and 3. So this is here as you can see cerebellum, cerebellum are present which that is used for the balance of the brain. So we will not understand that things. So here is the pituitary gland as well as hypothalamus. Hypothalamus contain paraventricular nucleus, the upper part of the hypothalamus near the hypothalamus so remember and here you can see the nucleus accumbens which that is also correlate so remember which that is you can understand the paraventricular nucleus of the hypothalamus and correlates with reduced dopamine when reduce the dopamine the neurotransmission within the nucleus accumbens so it means it will be point so here the brain which that contain klb receptor fgf receptor 1 and 3 and it is uh, give the response after the low level of the sugar consumption corticosterone increase sympathetic nervous system increase output increase and in this way the energy expenditure will lead to increase and food intake will be decreased so in this way the at appetite suppression will be increase a uh, decrease appetite suppression will be increased sorry not decrease so suppression will be increased it means we will not uh, feel the empty stomach or not feel the hungry so this brain will lead to bind with the paraventricular nucleus with the receptor. After this binding, the norepinephrine will be produced, go into the blood circulatory system, as well as the FGF receptor 1 and KLB also bind with the adipocytes. After this binding with the adipocyte will change the physiology also in the adipose tissue. We will discuss later, but first of all, we should need to understand the function of liver. So what is the function of liver due to the binding of the FGF21 autocrinally? Auto mean itself bind after the releasing from the gene uh, encoding uh, in the hepatocyte. So the hepatocyte is the major source for the production of the FGF21. So it will lead to fatty acid oxidation, de novo lipogenesis lipogenesis will be decreased and ketogenesis will be increased so the ketones body will produce more for the alternate form of glucose 
and insulin sensitivity will be increased and triglyceride storage will be decreased cholesterol synthesis decrease and gluconeogenesis on the basis of requirement acute and chronic can be decreased or de increase and glycogenolysis will be decreased glycogenolysis will be decreased and growth hormone sensitivity will be decreased so here is it will go and it will produce also the insulin a growth factor 1 and the insulin a growth factor binding protein 1 after this it will be bind in this way remember this insulin and glucagon also produce but here is the insulin like growth factor 1 which go into the blood circulatory system also the autocrinally bind with the liver but it is the response of the fasting it produce the insulin like growth factor 1 and go into the blood circulatory system and bind with the muscle and liver also autocrinally lead to uptake of glucose and lead to uptake of some things amino acid so the blood plasma can be detected by the ana analysis so here the adiponectin will be increased high density lipoprotein will be increased but low density lipoprotein will be decreased and triglyceride decrease fasting insulin will be decreased insulin like growth factor and binding protein and igf1 will be increase and glucose will be decreased corticosterone will be increased and glucagon also increase why glucagon also increase because the glycogenolysis and the uptake of the sugar into the blood circulatory system from the muscle and liver also increase so that is why glucagon also enhan enhance but here is a bone which that's contain osteocytes bind the klp and fgf1 or fgf receptor 1 with the fgf21 uh, hormone it, it it will be bind and the bone mass will be decreased because the oste osteoporosis and osteoblastogenesis will be decreased so in this way the bone deformation will be increased but remember that it is the limited and here the klb and fgf receptor 1 are present in the pancreas binding with the fg f21 possibly in the human with the pancreas with the pancreatic islet of langerhans insulin secretion will be increase or decrease on the basis of acute or chronic and the islet of langerhans number will be increased on the other why because the production of glucagon is required and insulin content will be increased and the endoplasmic reticulum stress will be decreased so in this way the auto paracrinally bind because the endoplasmic reticulum contains calcium so the calcium is used for the uh, more functional for the releasing of the exocytosis of the glucagon on the other hand here is the insulin and glucagon will be produced but glucagon more produced and here is the adiponectin and insulin as well as free fatty acid will produce through a lipolysis on the other hand the corticosterone will be increased will lead to target the liver and here the adipose tissue this adipose tissue contain klb and fgf receptor one again glucose uptake will be more and brown fat brown adipose tissue will be increased and the mitochondrial activity and browning and lipolysis and free fatty acid uptake and adiponectin release will be increased and the insulin sensitivity in skeletal muscle due to the adiponectin release so the, what is the function of adiponectin that is the major question for understanding so the adiponectin is basically used after the binding with the liver muscle and heart for that several function what is the function so the function is the glucose output will be decreased it means the glucose output will be decreased but the input of the glucose will be increased so in this way the fat accumulation will be decreased in the liver so the glucose output will be decreased and the fat accumulation will be decreased due to the beta oxidation and inflammation will be decreased while the glucose uptake will be increased in the muscle and fat accumulation will be decreased in the muscle and energy expenditure will be increased but in the case of heart inflammation decrease and endothelial adhesion foam cell formation will be decreased so this all thing is the basically the protection from insulin resistance type 2 diabetes and coronary artery disease so remember this adiponectin is very important for this function so important thing is you should need to understand it will drop the glucose level but it will glucose uptake due to the muscle 
and the muscle will uptake the glucose more and the fat accumulation will be decreased in the muscle as well as the liver which that will lead to prevent the steatosis and the fatty liver so let's begin to understand with the cellular pathway signaling pathway so here is the fgf21 will inhibit the growth hormone after the inhibition of the growth uh, growth hormone so the igf1 will be inhibited but in this case here is the igf receptor fgf and insulin receptor will trigger and phosphorylation to ras and ras to arc pathway arc 1 and 2 and here is the remember this is the uh, a beta clothos receptor which that trigger uh, fgf receptor 1 and 2 which that lead to increase the frs2 uh, 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 sorry fr52 alpha and ampk alpha and sit1 which that will be inhibit the bax and p53 protein gene but here is the insulin receptor substrate will trigger the akt and akt will inhibit the foxo and mtor path will be will be inhibited through uh, ampk alpha and in this way the stress resistance will be increased due to the foxo basically inhibit so the stress resistance and autophagy will be increased on the other hand the autophagy and the protein synthesis will be increased due to the arc 1 and 2 pathway and the cell survival will be occur, occur. Uh, uh, cell survival will be occur due to the inhibition of the p53 and bax protein and on the other hand here is the sirt1 pathway will inhibit the p53 and bax gene here and this BAX and P53 is responsible for the inhibition of the releasing um, that protein which that is encoded through a repairing gene in the DNA. So in this way it will be not inhibited so the longevity will be occur and in this way the cell will be prolonged and in this way the basically repairing mechanism autophagy, stress resistance and protein synthesis and cell survival will be occur. So in this way remember the FGF21 which that is important for the cell growth as well as the survival and anti-cancer.